Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, anyways, uh, let's start running. Uh, this is Artem with the Spray Garner. Hello, everybody. And I have a very special guest today. Drew Blair is uh, visiting for the class in from air, right? Yes, yes. And we're really glad to see you. I'm stealing him before uh, last daylight, like, yeah. for four days. And we have some uh, work already done. You're doing textures. Yeah, we've done a few things. Awesome job. I show some of those? Yeah, okay, okay. We've uh, played around with some textures. This is a Superman piece that we've done with the. Uh, Metal, trying to explore metal using different techniques, uh, showing how to make dark marks, dark scratches, light scratches, a little bit of stencil work just to keep the edges clean. And over here, we've got another piece here where we're actually using chemicals, we're using stencils, uh, different types of stencils, uh, erasers, different blades, and different techniques. There's many, many ways to create a texture, and we're trying to explore those ways. I see some student work there as well. Some student efforts here. Here's a fire, a little bit of fire there. Uh, a little bit of bark right here that they've done. Um, and of course, here's the first ones we did were just uh, introductory and there are some water droplets and some different types of spattering techniques along with some it's kind of uh, space ammonia. Yeah, a little spacey there. So it looks good though. Uh, we've had a good time. We've had some great students, of course, and it's a great environment to teach in. And you're using a lot of stencils and they're your stencil right there. Lots of stencils, right. yes, right. yes. And what I've got here is a couple of stencils here. This is one that we use for um, faces mainly. Uh, you can kind of see where we played around with it here in this example, just showing. This is for a male stencil, uh, male face, and we use this to create the subtlety and the textures that you don't see associated with a, mm. a man in, in the, with the skin. And actually, I think there's two, two best sellers, right, Chad? Mm. So, like, uh, two best sellers. So, uh, the skin texture, which is usable for space and uh, just on many other things. I mean, you use it almost for everything. You know, sometimes you're just messing it up for creating kind of uh, the noise, as you call it. Yeah, yeah. And the second one is a uh, special mini version of it. Just, yeah, love it, love it. And we got all these stencils here, actually. The whole, uh, the whole, whole book. Yeah, whole book here is uh, Drew Blair stencils. And I've noticed have a new version side of it. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, so we talk a little bit about that. Um, this right here is one that um, Paul McDonald and I collaborated on. Um, Paul and I wanted to do something that was a uh, What's called a dispersion stencil, meaning that you've got little tiny dots here, mm. and those little tiny dots spread out to more with more space between. They're the same size dots, but there's just a difference in the spacing of them. Of course, different size, and of course, over here you've got what's called an organic edge, and that's an edge that curves, that has a, a feel to it that's not too sterile and clean because it gives you a more natural result, like you'd see in nature if you're doing a face or you're doing an animal or something natural. So we try to incorporate that in there as well. Okay. That's awesome. We have new version in stock actually, and everything, I think every single stencil of yours is in stock. It's pretty good. And we carry a lot of uh, different stuff. And I can tell that this is a really good quality. And you say you say you have new laser coming up your way. Yes, we got new ones that are in development. Some are top, top secret. But to help us with the new development, we've got a new laser that we're having constructed right now. Should be ready in uh, mid February where we've got something. It's faster, it's cleaner, and it's going to make even more detail than what we're doing now. Yeah, some of them look really, the biggest one is just crazy dots detail. Oh yeah, that, that's the, the micro dots. And this is really, really small dots. Uh, these are really small dots, and they're used for pores in skin or something that's really, really difficult to achieve with the airbrush. Um, and this, they're spaced equally in the in middle and spaced a little bit further apart in the outside part of it. So it's a little bit of versatility built into each stencil. So yes, this book is really helpful for uh, when we're doing the photorealism. I know some scale models buying it for different purposes. And stencil is just helping you to create stuff faster than you know without it, pretty much. Or? Oh yes. Well, one of the things about a stencil, um, and, and I don't recommend people become dependent on stencils for their work, but you know, you need to know how to freehand. But once you get gain command of your freehand skills, uh, the stencil is a great tool. It can cut the time down to probably. 5% or even 2% of the time it would take to otherwise do it freehand. So like, why would I spend time, extra time doing it when I can do the same thing by picking up a stencil and spray it? Because time is money. So I, the, the whole idea of this is to make life easier and keep the quality up, of course. And definitely experiment with it because if it's called like skin sand stencil, doesn't mean it's really narrow to skin. You can use it in different areas, just uh, use imagination, right? Absolutely, you can do it for surface of fruit. It depends on how you apply it. And remember, you don't have to uh, hose it down like you're putting out a fire when you use a stencil. Some of the stencils are made to be used with a subtle amount of paint on there to create a very subtle, almost like a under texture, a sub texture on there. So 
Uh, it's not always necessary to hose it down. In fact, sometimes it looks better when you just barely spray some paint on it. So experiment a little bit, try some different things to see what works best for you, and I think you'll be happy with the results. Uh, speaking of workmans, I already <coughs> hauled it back a year ago when you were visiting. Real, I think, 30, 35 or so? Yeah that's, about, yeah, that's probably uh, mid '80s. I'm gonna guess, you know, yeah, somewhere. So you can see all the yeah the bare metal here. I can show it here on the on different camera. Yeah, so that's the oldest uh, Drew's airbrush. Yes, uh, it's uh, I've, I've seen some work. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you can tell how I hold it. It is worn out. Like mm -hmm. if, I, if I may, um, I hold my airbrush a little bit unconventionally. Um, instead of laying my put my finger on the top of the airbrush, mm -hmm. I lay my finger across it like this. And you see where my thumb is it is touching the. Um, that is actually worn the metal off right there, so you're seeing the brass underneath. Mm -hmm. um, now this has also been soaked in ammonia for a long time to be clean, and a lot of people think that the ammonia destroys the chrome on an airbrush, but this ammonia has uh, not done nearly as much damage as the oils and uh, yeah, yeah, acids from my skin, yeah, yeah. My things like that. Also, I got a shorter trigger on it and a soft spring in it. The soft spring helps, of course, with finger fatigue. It allows you to lay your finger on it and spray it, and that spring is interchangeable with many of the lines that you carry. So spring is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw it as well. People like it, and we have it pre-installed in the 770 airbrush, which is really popular. It's a uh, you know version of the similar uh, level of airbrush, let's say. Not working for you, unfortunately, because you can't you know, can't use your uh, style of you know holding here. So unfortunately, can't supply it. But this airbrush really got the nozzle from here. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, the nozzle is fantastic. You know, try the new nozzle that you, you mm -hmm. carry. And it's really smooth and it performs incredibly. It's, I didn't realize my other nozzle was so bad until I put yours in there. And it's really, it's sweet. So yeah, I'm going to keep that nozzle. And last year I gave you needles, but I think it worked. Yeah, the needle is fantastic. So, yeah, yeah, they're, so. both, they're both good quality. Yeah, I really appreciate the innovation things you guys have done to uh, for new products and new development. It's, it's wonderful. Links in the, in the description. I don't really have much time to play with this guy yet, right? But the overload feels, feels yeah, It's amazing, yeah. Uh, people think it's an air tank, but it's really more than an air tank. Mm. It's actual compressor in there and a battery, which is really amazing that you can fit all that technology in something so small that you can hold in your hand. Yeah, it's just the beginning. I feel this is going to be developing you know, into a bigger and bigger market, but for now, we're going to definitely yeah, yeah, give you one for trying uh, doing a portrait visit. This is one of the questions we have, you know, if you can do the portrait. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and see what in happens. Theory, I mean, yeah, why not? Yeah, so we'll, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know what it looks like. Okay. I'll try to do a good job, of course. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, that's uh, about equipment and some stencils. Definitely carrying everything you can carry from the Drupalers uh, collection. Really good collection, of helping artists to you know develop to the next level. Here at Spray Gunner, so visit us. And uh, if you don't know Drupaler yet, subscribe definitely. I'm pretty good to follow and get some tricks you know, in your brushing. Okay. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for watching.